Broadcasting live from the Business Radio X studios in Atlanta, Georgia, it's time for Atlanta Business Radio, spotlighting the city's best businesses and the people who lead them. Lee Cantor here, broadcasting live from ATDC in beautiful Midtown, Georgia, Atlanta. And I got with us a return guest, Araz Fazy, and he is with Cypher. Welcome, Araz. Thank you for having me. Well, before we get too far into things, talk about Cypher. What are you guys up to? I know you've been on the show recently, but let's get a quick update. Um, yeah, so um, as we talked before, you know, the big problem that we have today is that we have a lot of connected devices, five on average per person. An average user doesn't know how to go about protecting their per- life, you know, and um, you, you have your children are interconnected, your, ho- your home is uh, smart. And we realize that in order for a person or, or a small business to protect themselves against most of the cyber threats, they have to go out and buy a number of products, understand technology. We, we realized that just doesn't make sense. So let's make a product that's very easy to use, affordable, and also it's comprehensive. And that's Cypher. Um, we started shipping the product a couple of months ago. We have over 3,000 customers today um, in 75 countries. So we have presence on four continents. Um, and we just launched an Amazon a few few weeks ago as part of their Launchpad program. And you know we're um, working on making sure that Cypher protects everybody around the globe. Now, is it geared towards uh, uh, the consumer market or the commercial market? So today we're distributing Cypher directly to consumers. Uh, however, um, we have uh, we have been working on some more scalable channels such as managed service providers and also internet service providers to distribute Cypher to, to more customers. Uh, the, the whole uh, goal is that, you know, think about clean water. Uh, when the, the Imagine that the water that came through your main to door brought you untreated water and then you as a consumer had to figure out how to protect your family against contaminants in there. That just doesn't make sense. It sounds ridiculous in this day and age. You know, we believe that it's the same concept with the internet. We expect my parents, who are seventy some years old, to open an email and look at that uh, e- link and say, "Hey, that is not my bank. That is actually a phishing attack trying to um, take my money away." Um, uh, that we believe that the the cybersecurity is a shared responsibility between the consumer, obviously, and also the internet provider because they are experts. So we're talking to our internet providers. We're providing them with the technology that they can use to provide a safe internet experience to their customer. That technology is Cypher. And then, um, so what's your backstory? How'd you get into this line of work? Um, my, well, see, I've, I've been a geek since middle school. I've been programming since middle school. I, I, have, a, I have a degree in engineering. I have a graduate degree in information systems. And you know, I've spent my um, career in, in automating things and, uh, and analytics. And my co-founder, who's my friend from middle school, he has uh, deep experience in cybersecurity. He has over 10 years of experience in, uh, in, in um, enterprise cybersecurity. We joined forces together to start this company for, you know, for good reason, because uh, we come from a background where uh, you know, privacy is not just the right that you have uh, in the country that you live. So when we, we believe that it's a, it's, a, it's a fundamental right and we want to bring that to people, we want everybody to be able to have the privacy and security they want and they shouldn't have to stay unprotected because they just don't have the knowledge. So we, we joined forces and we decided to do this thing together. And then now for the consumer standpoint, like you mentioned, there's multiple devices and there could be multiple generations living in the same home. And each of those people have specific challenges into themselves in terms of the, how sophisticated they are in their knowledge about computers and computing. Like, you know, you, the adult in the family might be know that that's not my bank. That is somebody trying to trick me, but my parents may not know that or my kid might see some flashing thing and think oh that's that's cool let me jump all over that that seems like something i should click on and uh so cypher is going to come in there and and kind of protect the family from themselves yeah the, great point so that's obviously that's that's the reality right so we have connected devices that are not people they're just machines that are connected to internet iot then right like have- that's my i'm talking to my alexa right exactly and there's a th- that brings challenges and my um, now my refrigerator is connected to things, or my stove. Like all these things are now connected in ways, and and hackers can come in and they can, right? Can't they go and and take my camera out out of some device? And now they're looking at me when I'm not aware of it. Like there's all kinds of danger involved with all this mm-hmm. convenience that these devices are providing me. 
That's absolutely correct. So, you know, you have devices that are interconnected. You have people who live and they have different needs. So we understand uh, that that different devices and different connected devices in the home have different needs. As a result, what you can do is with Cypher is that we identify all the devices in the home. And then you as the as an admin of the home network, you say, okay, so these are all the IoT devices. Categorize them together and tell Cypher, these are basically my IoT devices, internet connected devices. These three devices belong to my daughter, who is nine years old, and we understand what that person's needs are. And then these five devices belong to me. And we can apply policies accordingly. Mm-hmm. So we know that the, the, the policy that needs to be applied for the kid is different from the internet connected devices, IoT, and all that's different from uh, an adult who's working from home. So now when you developed the, the business, was it always going after the consumer market first? Was that your kind of initial point of entry and then go to these kind of larger um, ISPs? And because and, like you said, you don't I don't have to have a filter for my sink and a different filter for my hose and a different like, you know, the water company just puts a filter and it does the job. Yeah, you know, the, what, the analogy I, I use is that we believe that Cypher for an internet provider is like water treatment facility vendor or product to uh, a municipality. Right. So we provide that technology as, as, as an internet provider. You don't really have to invent that, reinvent that wheel because, you know, uh, there are over a thousand ISPs in the US alone. Most people don't know that, but we usually know the top five because we, we live in, um, you know, metro areas and those are the ones that are present there. But just in, um, rural areas, there are more than four to 600 ISPs that are serving 60% of Americans. So um, we built this technology and we wanted to deploy it um, at a scale. At, at scale. But right. we understood that as a startup, you can't really you know, build a product, go out there and start selling it to ISPs. So we had a plan that we've been executing against for the past two and a half years. Um, step one was to create a product, sell it to consumers, establish our brand, you know, show that we can do what we say we do, which we've accomplished. We have Almost, um, we're, we're, we're hoping to close a million dollar this year uh, by the end of the year. And then we're on Amazon and we're on multiple outlets. So step number two was to, after proving the brand, after uh, establishing the brand, start selling through more scalable channels, which that's what we're actively doing. We have a couple of proof of concept deals running with a couple of ISPs in the US. We're hoping to close one of them by the end of the year. We also have uh, been working with some international managed service providers to provide it through them. Now, step three, which um, is, is our plan for 2020, is to um, release our software-only backend integration, which is targeting larger ISPs. You can think of it as, you know, um, AT&T home service or even, uh, you know, wireless services as well. Now, the device that you're selling to the consumers, is it just something that kind of plugs in before my router or after my router, and then it's taking care of my house specifically? Yeah, so what we call it Cypher Gateway. It's a small device um, that sits um, on on your gateway, so we, you know on the path of your traffic in line, which couldn't which can be between your modem and router. Mm-hmm. So you have your modem that comes from the ISP, then you plug in Cipher, and then you have your router, and um, all of your traffic goes through it, and and Cipher handles all of your traffic and protects. All and the then it doesn't there. impact the speed or anything, um, it, unless you have um, a fiber gigabit service, you 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 won't notice um, any slowdowns. Um, we do have um, a, a new product coming out early next year. We call it Cypher Pro. That one is a much um, faster device that's that's um, that's designed to serve larger companies plus um, users who have uh, gigabit service. Mm-hmm. Now, um, how has your involvement with the ATDC been? Have they been uh, helpful in helping you grow your business? Um, this. I, this is something I say uh, everywhere I go is that ATDC is one of the best things that, ha- that has happened to our company in, in Georgia. It's a fantastic organization. Um, we've been a member for a couple of years now. Uh, we are an Accelerate member right now. We don't, we, don't, uh, we don't have offices here just because of the commute, but I'm always here every week. Um, and and we, any corporate that we want to speak with, any Fortune 500, it's a phone call away. If I have any kind of questions regarding whatever you, you name it, sales, marketing, um, I can, um, I can um, get hooked up with a, um, with an advisor here in, in a few days and, and get my questions answered. It's one of the best resources we have in the state of Georgia. Now you mentioned that, um, like when you're pursuing these big corporations, you know, where it's hard, it's a, it's a complex thing to explain. You got to get to the right person. You said that you're one phone call away. Can you talk specifically about, you don't have to name the company name, but how would ATDC help you facilitate that conversation with somebody that's 
important to you in one of these larger organizations? Um, yeah. So we have, we, each company has a mentor here. Let's say I want to talk to company X and I want to reach their technology department and talk to them about Cypher or a partnership or, or, or getting access to their lab. Uh, I give a call or send an email to my mentor. I usually get an answer really quickly saying, Hey, um, it's not my, my thing, but you're going to talk to this other lady or gentleman. And then, um, let's go ahead and schedule a meeting. Um, we schedule a meeting. I sit down with them, explain my needs. And before I know it, there's an introduction in my mailbox. And then that person takes your call. Absolutely. They always pick up the phone. They always respond to the email. The, the warm intros that, that I've received from ATDC, whether it's, uh, it's a VC firm, whether it is an advisor, whether it's a corporate, they, they have, they have been the ones that have been really well received. Now talk about, you recently took part of, uh, uh, from a roadshow tour around, uh, I believe the Northeast New York, Boston area, where that was ATDC organized a trip for some of the startups here and um, made some introductions or why don't you tell us about what occurred in that trip? Um, one of the great things that ATC does is I believe it's twice a year. Um, they plan this roadshow, the fundraising roadshow. Um, they basically pick 10 to 12 companies, 10 to 14 companies uh, from the state of Georgia that are uh, raising funds. Um, you know, you apply and, and you get interviewed and then there's a selection committee. And if you're, if you're selected, um, you uh, basically go on this trip. Uh, this trip was to Northeast New York and Boston. Mm-hmm. And ATDC does a fantastic job in, in orchestrating this trip. What happens is you have sponsoring companies that, that host you for lunch, lunch and dinner. They bring their venture capital uh, circle. Um, also, uh, there's a pitch session in every city that we go to where um, hundreds of AVCs are invited. Usually, um, you know, for example, on this trip, I think we had um, somewhere between 50 and 100 VCs that showed up. To wow. listen to our pitches. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we get, every company gets four minutes to go on stage and pitch. Um, these VCs get a copy of, um, uh, the, the participating company's, um, background. So they have the op- option to go ahead and schedule one-on-one meetings before and after the pitch session. I, I believe I had somewhere close to eight to 10 one-on-one sessions that VCs scheduled with me mm-hmm. to talk about Cypher. And obviously there's a social event afterwards that we can hang out with the ISPs and or with the, um, with the VCs and kind of discuss uh, our financial needs. Now for something like that, how much time does that save you? Like if you were to try to do that without ATDC's help, can you just guesstimate how much energy, time, resources, or if it would even be possible? Look, this is, so the process that you have to go through is you have to research, find the right firm. That, that fits your needs uh, from, from a stage perspective and industry's perspective. Find someone who knows them. Get the intro. Uh, get, get something on the calendar. It takes weeks to, to have a quality meeting with, uh, with a good uh, VC firm. And, um, and ATDC does that. And then they do that. And all of a sudden you have 50 uh, high quality VCs sitting in the room with you listening to your pitch. I and wanting priceless. to learn more. Wanting As to opposed learn more, to yeah. you trying to say, hey, pick me. Yeah. They've already picked you. Yep, they sit there and then you know they listen to you and then you they schedule meetings with you. You you speak with them and I came back with countless um, follow up meetings. From right, the, and sure. those are connections that you can use later on. They've already you've already built a relationship with them. There, that's that's a gift that keeps on giving. Absolutely. So you know, a startup doesn't just if you're raising funds, you're raising funds now, but you know that you're gonna, you'll probably be raising funds in the future. And then these these fund they, these investments don't happen overnight. They, they usually four to six months goes into the process. And obviously if you have a pre-existing relationship with a VC, if they've been tracking you, seeing their progress, you have a much better chance of raising funds. So for example, you know, we had a really high quality VCs, like one that comes to mind right now is Battery Ventures. Battery Ventures are there. We're, we were, we're too early for them now, but we sat down, we spoke, and we're going to stay in touch for, for future rounds. Now for you in the evolution of this company, it started out um, as one thing. And now with, uh, the Internet of Things kind of permutating all these different areas in terms of now cars and, and um, mobile, everything, everything is, it's touching everything now. Does that require you to now kind of have a more robust solution that can play in all those different arenas? Um, so when it comes to connectivity, everything is changing. Today, we have on average five connected devices per person. The forecast is that in the next 10 years, we will have 20 connected devices per person, you know. We might think it's crazy, but think about light bulbs, doors, windows, thermostats, everything will be kind of connected. So that's changing. Plus the needs are changing. But, you know, th- there was no cryptocurrency, you know, 10, 20 years ago. So 
Um, there were scams that would scam your credit card. Today, there's cryptocurrency. The, so the type of the threat has changed. So it's evolving. That's why our motto is safer with Cypher. What that means is all you need to know that Cypher will protect you. We will evolve as threats evolve and we will evolve as your needs evolve. So all you need to know is that we're there. Cypher is there. Cypher brand is there to protect you. Uh, as long as you, you have Cypher, we'll make sure that you're protected against the most common, common tr- threats. So now if you could kind of look into your crystal ball, you mentioned going from five to 20 connected devices. It's, it's going to be everywhere. Like everything's going to be connected at some point, right? Yeah. Um, you know, we walk uh, everywhere we walk, uh, you know, our picture is in some sort of a ca- camera. Uh, we have a watch or, or cell phone that's connected. Cars are connected now and soon shoes and clothes will be connected. Right. But like, like lights, you know, the, the mm-hmm. traffic lights are connected. If cars are connected, everything, it can be learning and adjusting based on all that data. So all that data obviously needs to be protected because if there's data out there, then anybody can tap into it if they're clever enough. Right. It, you know, it's, it's saying, you know, data is the, is the new gold. Um, yeah. For, so for a couple of things that are, are, that are expensive resources. One, obviously the processing power. So if, wherever you have a connected device, there, there's a processing power there. So you, you always have people who are out there trying to hire your device to work for them, either to attack someone or to mal or to, or to mine cryptocurrency for them or, 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 or or, or, you know, the, the list goes on. So, yeah, so everywhere we have a connected device, we have a, we have a device that's smart and, and, and has processing power and connectivity needs to be protected. Now, is there, are you on a clock in terms of like now with 5G kind of uh, rolling out and going to be more and more available and that's going to just increase the amount of data that's going to be processed? Does that put you kind of on a clock to stay ahead of that or are you already kind of prepared for that? Um, glad you asked. We, um, we're actually working with one of the largest um, telecoms, wireless telecoms, uh, has has a lab here in the U.S. I, I don't think we can mention the name yet, but um, we, we've gotten into an agreement with them to start testing, um, start testing Cipher in their five G lab here in the here in the uh, in Atlanta metro area, uh, and that's that's the future. Uh, the future of of connectivity is five G, and and we want to be there, uh, have a product for for that market um, when it becomes mainstream. Now, what's your kind of guesstimate of when it's going to become mainstream? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, 5G is still developing, uh, and standards are developing. Um, I, I, my guess is that in the next, you know, four to five years will, will, will be a decent pro- portion of the connectivity in this country. And then what's it going to mean to the consumer? Um, it really depends. So it, it can be anything from, hey, I get much better, I have much better options in, in my home to get internet, uh, to, um, g- it gives developers a lot of options. So when you have cars, um, now you can actually manage them remotely because you have really high quality, um, low latency and high bandwidth connectivity. Um, and it's, go- it's just going to create much, much, um, interest, much more interesting use cases that we don't, we can't even think of today. Right. It's going to be, but this is a leap, right? This isn't going to be like an incremental tweak. Absolutely. Yeah. This is not an incremental increase. This is a, this is a, this is a order of magnitude kind of, um, change. And then, so you still think we're several years away? Of kind of full mainstream. I don't think I'm the right person to comment on this. I, I believe yes, it's going to take us a while because we. So now you have uh, cities coming out and having concerns about the uh, drawbacks of of deploying five uh, G. So we have to find the right way to deploy right. it. We have it's, to find the right standard and technology. It's one of those uh, gradually, then suddenly mm-hmm. kind of moments. You think? Yeah. I think there's going to be, there's going to be some pushback, and and then we have to figure this out to do it right. So now getting back to ATDC, any advice for a company that's uh, considering kind of jumping on board the ATDC train and getting involved with them? What would you recommend? Look, I think if you are a, a, a new business, a startup, a technology a startup here in the state of Georgia, and if you're not already involved with ATDC, you're missing out. Um, this is one of the first thing that I tell people when I, you know, hear that they're working on a venture and I say, the first thing you need to do is to shop at ADDC, join their, you know, free open events and, and learn about them. And because it's one of the best resources we have here in the, here in the state. Now you mentioned that your firm started with a, a middle school friend, but your wife is also involved in, uh, it has a, her own business. Can you talk about that? Because it seems like it's, uh, wherever you hang out. There's uh, a lot of successes is following. Yeah, uh, my my wife actually she's a scientist for um, for the government. She works for the CDC. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, she has a lot of experience in, uh, in 
in this uh, world. So we try to uh, we try to use her uh, knowledge and expertise as much as we can. Mm -hmm. And then she has a venture that she's working on. Uh, she does not. She does not. No, we okay. have. Uh, We've had, you know, one venture, two kids, uh, and, uh, and a full-time job. I think we have enough. Good stuff. Well, congratulations on all your success, and uh, keep us posted on things, uh, how things uh, evolve. And then if somebody wants to learn more about Cypher, what is the website? MyCypher.com, M-Y-S-Y-F-E-R. All right, Araz, thank you so much for sharing your story. Thank you very much for having me. Appreciate all it. All right, this is Lee Cantor. We will see you in a little bit on ATDC Radio.